Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. Today I continue my while beyond the Witchlight Carnival build with the Mystery Mines. Propelled by magic, mine carts laden with fair goers trundle into an opening carved like a dragon's mouth. The carts reappear moments later on the far side of the attraction, with the passengers expressing a mixture of bewilderment, fear and excitement. Near the entrance, a male dwarf dressed like a wizard shouts. Unlock the mysteries of your mind in the mystery mind. Looking at the artwork, this is a pretty fun little build. This requires two caves and some mine tracks. I also wanted to build the little wooden stage where I imagine the dwarf dressed as a wizard is punching tickets as people enter and helping bewildered customers out of the mine carts. Everything in this is very much modular and could be taken apart and reused for a variety of different games. First thing I did was jump online and found some models. I found a couple of caves that I liked, one with a skull of a dragon to represent the dragon's mouth and another just large cave. Both of these are going to be linked in the description. The large skull mouth cave I actually kit bashed with some of these tracks that I have used for the rest of the build as I wanted to try one combined and one where I just sat them together. So I got to printing and then gave everything a primer with fiddly bits grey. Now everything's primed up and ready to go, it's time to gather up my bits and pieces. One of these caves has already received a little bit of contrast paint with a contrast Space Wolves grey, Basilicanum grey and Skeleton Horde. I start off with a Cygor 50-50 mix with the contrast mix medium. This works as a nice dark base for any wooden elements, so I'll be using it for the wooden staging area for the tickets, as well as the mine carts. Once I'd based the wooden parts, I decided to move on to a mithril silver. Not realizing that the lid had come off, I tipped way too much of this out. After attempting to save the lid, and try to suck a little bit of it back into the dropper bottle, I gave up and decided to just paint as many silver things as I could find on my board. So to get started we're going to jump straight into the building at hand and start painting in all the metal on the tracks. Remembering to paint any tracks that were kit bashed into the cave models before coming in and adding in a few little metal nails onto the staging area. After this, I continued to paint about 15 other models with the rest of this silver paint just to get it used and not waste everything that tipped out. Now busting out the Gore Grunter fur in the contrast paints, I'm going to go over all of the wooden slats in the mine tracks. These mine tracks were originally painted with a spray brown, so a single layer of this should really do the trick but it will still take a while and is still fairly fiddly. The final stage for any timber is a towel light ochre dry brush. This brings out all the highlights and really adds something special to any wooden texture. I came back in over the skull with a skeleton horde citadel paint to brighten up the skeletal color. While this first cave might have gotten some contrast paint, the other one just had the basic fiddly bits grey primer coat. And then I came back in with a few grey coats in different levels of dry brush, starting with a cold grey from Vallejo Game Air, and then going into the Vallejo Surface Primer Grey. Essentially working my way up into the brighter colors as I worked further up into the dry brushing. All right, time to add some fun to these bases. We're gonna start by throwing down a layer of Mod Podge and then just spreading out some dirt all over this. You could also use PVA glue or any kind of basic craft glue here. This stuff's just preferred for me because it dries matte and a lot quicker. Once you've spread a good amount of dirt, just tip off the excess, give it a couple of taps and there you go, you've got something a little bit more interesting for the base already. Now we just repeat this a few more times to fill in any gaps, and then again with a slightly heavier grit or some bigger rocks to add some more variation. If I'm being honest, 
this is my favorite part of any project. Smothering a heap of glue all over it and then just covering it in moss. There's no wrong answers here. Essentially, I've painted out the shape of a vine or something growing up the side of the rock and then just poured a whole heap of this foam flock all over the side of the model, tapped it in and let the excess fall away. I've continued to do this over the rest of the model, just adding more vining shapes and growing kind of natural feeling patterns and adding more flock as I need it. Generally, I'd recommend using a few different types of flock here, but I only had the one color, so I stuck with that. As you can see, I've also used some bits and pieces with just the brown dirt to try and add some variation to the top of the cave to make it look a little bit more natural and lived in. And now we repeat the process on the second cave. There's no need to be shy here. You can't overdo it or underdo it. It's the great thing with these kinds of details, anything works. Ideally you do this kind of thing on top of a piece of paper or cardboard where you can collect up all the leftovers. I'm going to add some Tamiya Diorama Texture Paint Soil Effect Brown. I like using this around the bases of most of my things as I know I'm going to use this on the actual build base so this will help blend the element in. Before I start going to town on the models with a whole heap of static grass tufts and flock flowers. Helping to give this thing the Feywild touch that this fairy carnival requires. And as always, I'm going to add far too many flowers and grass tufts to this build, as is the gardener in me. And it was at this point that I realised that I'd forgotten to build a centrepiece. I'd kind of been focusing on the track and the cave so much that I hadn't really looked at that map. So I jumped onto Tinkercad and threw something together. Comparing it to the original artwork, I came up with this basic shape. It is a little bit weird, like this, but once I bring it over to Chitterbox and throw a few more masks in there and a star of Paylor to represent that sun on top, it starts to look a little bit more like what it's meant to. So then I printed this model out and got it ready to paint. first layer of paint was a mithril silver over the entire model. And then hitting the upper part with a contrast green before adding the golden details to the sun on the top and a few elements around the base. And then coming in with a few brightly colored contrast paints to add some rainbow elements to the masks and the base. Now that everything's painted up, we're going to grab the caves and add the portals. So we're going to shove some polyfill into the mouth of the cave, put some LEDs in the hole underneath, and then just switch them on. The polyfill diffuses the light and gives a nice little magic portal feel. And lastly, we're going to paint up a little dwarf dressed as a wizard who will be punching a ticket on the way into the mystery mine. So now we've set up another ride for the Witchlight Carnival. We've punched a few holes in our tickets, but we've still got a few to go. I plan on expanding this build out and possibly building a large section of this board. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I wish you safe travels in the wilds beyond the Witchlight. <laughs>